the executive branch tries to assume the legislative powers that that's a form of tyranny. The president can't, he's not going to tell the American people that he's going to wait for Congress. He's an American citizen and it stands to reason that he might be frustrated with Congress uh, since most American citizens are. We're not going to wait. I've got a pen and I've got a phone and that's all I need. Obama's definition of unity is eliminating opposition, not agreeing with them and peacefully coexisting with them. It's eliminating them. He's going to use his pen and his phone. There's not a lot he can do. That's why you hear him talking about pens and telephones, because he can't get anything through Congress. The president should absolutely use the powers available to him and the unique authority that the office provides. He's used the power of his presidency in two areas, his pen, which is executive orders, presidential memories, also the phone. What he can do is he can pick up the phone, bring together American citizens. He says, oh, well, it's hard to get Congress to do anything. Well, yeah, welcome to the real world. Change. Well, not exactly change. It's another big broken promise from President Obama. The president promising to change Washington when he moved into the White House. But after failing at that, the president is now threatening to bypass the legislative branch of government and just sign executive orders to get what he wants. Is that the kind of change President Obama campaigned on? Charles Krothammer joins us. Nice to see you, Charles. And Charles, what's this business about? He's going to change Washington, all this gridlock business. Yeah, well, he's going to eliminate the... Uh Article 1 of the Constitution, which says that uh, legislation comes from Congress. This is how they do it in Venezuela, Cuba, and other places. The Caudillo waves a pen. He shows it on Twitter and says, I will rule from the pen. Uh, what makes it sort of pathetic is that it sounds like a tough threat, and it is unconstitutional. It's not how you ought to beat the President of the United States. But in the end, he really has, there's very little he can do. What's interesting is that in, he said the same thing in 2011. This was a speech he gave in Nevada. It was announced by the White House as the We Can't Wait tour. And it was one statement after another, I'm not going to wait uh, for Congress to act. I will do X, Y, and Z. In the end, it didn't work because in the end, the only things a president can do with a pen and executive orders are fairly li limited. With one exception, that's EPA and using the, uh, the EPA to shut down entire industries. That's well, you know, power. It, it, a couple of things from this memo that's, that's gotten out to Washington Post reported on. When he said that he's not going to go to Congress, but he's going to go and use his pen, that to me, when you campaign on, I'm going to change Washington, that means I give up. And that's not exactly what you expect the leader to do. You expect the leader to sort of carry out those promises. That's the first thing. The second thing is, is that so many Democrats are, are making cracks about Governor Christie as being a bully. Because, and that now all of a sudden we got a bully who says, I'm just going to use my pen. I'm going to bypass Congress. So, it, you know, it's sort of interesting that, you know, is that on the one hand, yeah. they, they hate the attitude Governor Christie has when he says he's going to do things. But when the president does it, it's okay. And the reason he gave up is because he failed. He was unable to do to Washington what he thought he would do. And he couldn't even do what other presidents have done, which he wanted to transcend and, uh, and to make it to a more... Uh, you know, uh, efficient, harmonious, no red state, no blue states America. He didn't do any of that, but he can't even do what normal presidents have done, what a Clinton did, uh, what a Reagan did, which is to work with the other side. I, but see, I think Clinton actually liked members of Congress, even the ones he didn't agree he liked with. Politics. Yeah, he liked politics. Yeah. I don't get the sense that President Obama, I think that like fate worse than death is to have to spend any time with any politician of either party. You and get, he, he played golf once with John Boehner or twice, you, you, maybe. You get the impression he chose the wrong field. Yes. <laughs> or he chose to run to the White House because he didn't want to stay in the Senate where he'd have to be around colleagues. Yeah, but, you know, but he doesn't like what the presidency requires which is a some understanding and some respect for the other side reagan and tip o'neill worked out uh, the most important piece of economic legislation tax reform uh, and they were polar opposites ideologically obama has tax reform in his reach there are republicans who want to do it it would change the economy it would be a tremendous help to economic expansion and fairness because it would take away the loopholes that the rich have he hasn't touched it in five years. And, and you know, you think it'd be so fun to change the tax code to make it fair and get rid of the loopholes, that, you know, the extra special. But anyway, I'm taking the last word on that, Charles. You got it. Straight ahead, Senator.